my nice new brother WP1 word processor. I could connect the Raspberry Pi up to the UART. Sadly, this turns out not to be viable. This is a very cheap PSOC 5 development board. And wire that up. We now have nearly all of the Verilog stuff working. I think that is it. And nothing has happened. So I think my status registers are not working. Uh, my app bit assignments are all overlapping. I think this might work. And then next time we'll come back with some Z80 machine code. Here we are back in Linux, living the good life with Vim. And we're going to write a simple terminal program that reads bytes from our interface and writes them to the console and reads bytes from the console and writes them to the interface. I've done all the setup with the build system. This is going on top of my CPM-ish system. So it's actually generating, when I do a build, a bootable disk image that I can write to floppy and then uh, immediately boot, which is nice. And here is our stub program. Okay, how is this going to work? Well, it's extremely simple. We are going to, this is the wrong page, this is the CPM documentation. No, it's not, that's Reddit. What's that doing there? Uh, here we go, BIOS entry points. Uh, we're going to use the three BIOS console entry points to talk to the console and we're going to do direct hardware access to talk to the interface. So we're actually going to have a loop. Uh, this The program starts right at the top with no initialization. It's not going to be a complicated program. And what we want to do is to test to see whether there is anything on the console, that is the user has pressed a key. To do that we want to call the BIOS address plus 06. Our addresses library here has contained the, uh, the address of the BIOS, so this should do it. So that will Con ST. Uh, sample the status of the currently assigned console device and return FF in register A if a character is ready to read and 00, zero if no console characters are ready. So once we've done this, we want to test A. Uh, simply doing or with A will set Z if it's a 0. And then we are going to call do a conditional call to a routine that we'll write later called key pressed. That will actually fetch the key from the keyboard and write it to the interface. Next, we want to um, test the interface. So I have my piece of paper. I have my piece of paper. So in order to test to see if there is a key pressed, we want to read port 41 into A, and with a mask value to uh, leave just the read status bits, that's three, that is the bottom two bits and then we are going to compare with one which is iris readable and if this is true uh, that's a z I believe we're going to call And then we 
call our loop routine. Okay, let's actually invert these. Oh, and that should be a JR, JR. No interface byte. Okay, and this does not build because uh, I think we need to do it this way around. It is correct. And I've been using too, too much 6002 code so you don't do hash signs. Okay, right, so this is no longer calling a routine. We're actually going to put the the routine to do this here. So to read the kill key from the keyboard, we are going to call conin, which is at BIOS plus 09. And then uh, let me think. Actually, we are actually going to test to make sure the interface is writable first. Uh, so to get the the right state, we want uh, so there's four bits. The bottom two bits are the read status. The top two bits are the write status. So that is going to be OXC. Compare that with zero. Two. Right, so we'll only get to here if we know that the interface is writable. So we can immediately write the value to the, the value that we just read from the console to the output buffer. Then we want to mark the, we want to tell the interface that we've done it like so. Now we want to wait for the interface to switch to the done state. So Uh, the done state is eight. If it is not zero loop, now we acknowledge that we've seen done like so. Acknowledge done. Let's acknowledge data. And that should be our write code. That was surprisingly non complex. Okay. Now we do the read side of things. We know that we're in the readable state. So all we need to do is to 
read the data byte and then call con out, write console character out. Character is sent from register C. So that's going to be in C, B base plus, here it's con out, OC. We now we need to set the we need to tell the interface that we have done the read. So that is one read it as read knowledge data out for one comma array. And then we do a very similar loop. We actually want to compare against uh, read status done, which is two. Uh, this is read status done is not eight, it's two. It's uh, write acknowledge done that's eight. Wait, no, that is that is eight. Yes, read, read status done is two, write status done is eight. Read status done, here we go, it's two, otherwise loop. Then we want to send a read acknowledge done and fall through. What is this not liking? Okay, we can't read into C, so that should do it. Okay. And I think that is our program. It's probably not going to work. Now, there are issues, which is the primary, the primary issue is that while we are spinning here, waiting for WS done, we are not waiting for, uh, we're not acknowledging bytes coming in from the interface. That's fine because we don't expect to be there for very long. Uh, the BIOS interface in CPM is rather limited, so con st here will let you test for a key being pressed, but there is no way to test to see whether the output is blocked or not. So it's possible that this may take a reasonable amount of time. Still very little. I mean, the, the longest time this will take to execute is to clear the screen, and we're not in a frame buffer. So that should be quick. And our actual compiled program should be in uh, brother one tools pterm peter sim. It is a whole sixty-five bytes. That's it. So um, let me just go and grab the floppy disk from the workbench. Stick it in the drive and use Flux Engine to write it. I already have a command present, so okay, that's finished the write. So now we take it back to the workstation and see if it works. Well, I have discovered one slightly disturbing thing, which is, as you can see, the computer is running even though I have in fact disconnected the power. It's being fed from uh, the interface here via USB. So, well, uh, my laptop seems to be quite happy about uh, doing that, but it really shouldn't. Um, anyway, let us hold down code. No, oh, wait, hang on, let's put the floppy disk in the drive first.
hold down code and Q and press the reset button. Oh, uh, let's turn the real power on first, shall we? Let's try that one again. Good, and we're booting. And there is our program called PTERM, so let's try it. Okay, it's loaded. So if I type, stuff should come out on the serial terminal. Well, that was looking good up to a point. Right, what happens if I type in the serial terminal? Again, that worked up to a point. So it's clearly wedged somewhere, and I don't know where or why. Interesting. Now let me reboot that and have another go. Yeah, that noise is because the drive isn't coming up to speed correctly. So let's try the serial terminal first, shall we? Right, nothing is happening there. Let's try the brother. And now nothing is happening there. Interesting. That makes me suspect that the board here has crashed somehow. In fact, I believe that we still have the we still have the blue light that's supposed to toggle whenever the status register is fiddled with. Okay, um, let's simplify p-term and try that again, I think. Well, this isn't Linux, this is back into Windows again, because I realize that uh, two important things. One is that I need to put all that uh, state machine tracing back into this and the other is there that there is in fact no way to reset the interface so we're going to put in a reset acknowledge bit when this is set then regardless of what state the state machine is in we will always go back to the initial state. This way we avoid issues where the client thinks the interface is in one state, but the uh, the board is in another. Um, and I've also modified pterm to do this on startup. So let's add some tracing. through and insert all the debug tracing that I foolishly took out before to RS done RS done to RS idle WS writable to WS writing. WS writing to WS 
done. And finally, WS done to WS writable. Okay. So we program this and then it's back off to the workbench to see what happens. All right, I've just started P-Term and as you can see, the interface has says reset. So if I press a key on the brother, we go from writable to writing, it prints a queue, writing to done, done to writable. Oh, and it stopped working. It's gone writing to done, but it hasn't gone done to writable. Now, you remember that earlier issue where it seemed to be dropping occasional acknowledge bits? I wonder if it has done that. That would be annoying if so. But we should now be able to reset the board. Once the disk drive spins up, it boots. We run pterm and the interface resets. So let's now try pressing keys on the serial terminal. Right, and now it's wedged. Uh, I think that actually looks suspiciously as if pterm is stuck waiting for WS done and it's not doing anything else, which is why it's not responded to the read state. So I think I need to reboot the desktop and go and have a look at what pterm is doing. Well, I discovered that my phone had in fact run out of disk space, so I may have lost the last few bits of video recordings, but Everything is better now, so we start up our p-term and we see it reset on the serial terminal. So now I press a key and what that is telling me, I can see the, I can see it go through in the serial terminal, it's gone all the way back down to writable. What I can see here is W means it's in the right delay loop. The digit following is the state of the interface. So zero means that it's in writable, uh, which is, yeah, okay, that's plausible. So what we did was we wrote the byte to the buffer we uh, then sent the, uh, the ACK bit to tell it that we had done the write and then we started looping. So we expect to see, yeah, it's stuck in writable until the interface uh, processes the ACK bit, at which point it goes to state writing, which is a four, and then that loops until it goes to done. Um, yep, that is exactly what I would expect to see. So let's try a few more. Okay. Keeps working. Okay, that's interesting. Um... So I pressed a W at that point. I can see that it, the we're still in the writable state according to the interface. That mess that's appearing out on the screen is because it's constantly updating. It's stuck in um, in the, the the wait loop. Uh, the only thing I can see coming out is lots of zeros, so uh, it's, yeah, the, that is correct. The brother is seeing 
the interface is in state zero, which is writable, which is exactly what we see in the serial terminal. However, it's never switching to writing. This suggests to me like the ACK bit has been lost. That's annoying. Anyway, I believe this to be a Verilog problem, so let's reboot the desktop again. So I actually think I have a solution, although I'm not quite sure why this works. So I went and actually read the documentation for the status reg. And I found that when you're in sticky mode, then the input is sampled when clock goes high, which means that I didn't actually need the edge detector. I can feed the output enables directly into the status register via a sync block to uh, align the clock correctly. And it seems to work. So I'm still not really sure what's going on with that because with the edge detector present we should get a pulse which has got a leading edge and a trailing edge so possibly possibly the data isn't arriving at the status reg when the clock when the pulse shows up which is peculiar because i would expect the clock to be more delayed because it's got to go through the sync block than the actual data, which is coming directly from the data pins. But anyway, if I program this, then this happens. So we start up PTERM as usual. And now we can type. And you can see characters showing up in the middle of the debug tracing on the serial terminal. And you can see lots of spam coming from my PTERM tracing on the brother. And if I hammer the keyboard, it does not lock up. And likewise, if I go over to the serial terminal and I type there, and once again, I keep forgetting to put the mouse pointer in the right window, then you can see stuff come out on the brother side. And I can hammer the keyboard there. and it doesn't lock up. And in fact, I can hammer both keyboards and everything seems to work fine. Of course, this is full of tracing. So the next thing to do is to remove the tracing from both the interface and from Peter and see if it still continues to work. Okay, let us try it. Come on. Okay. Hmm. Yes, I am not so convinced. I mean, it's it's mostly working, but you can see in the serial log, in the serial terminal, that it's sometimes getting characters wrong. It appears to be repeating the previous character rather than using the one I just typed. Okay, let's try typing in the serial port. Again, I need the right window. Uh, okay, that missing M was my fault. That's not bad. I don't think there are any problems there. 
Hammering the keyboard doesn't produce any lockups there. Hammering the keyboard here doesn't produce any lockups there. Doing them both ways at the same time. Seems to work fine. So, yeah, there is clearly a problem. This is me typing two letters alternately and you can see it is sometimes getting it wrong. What it doesn't seem to be doing is inserting spurious characters or missing characters, which is good. Okay, so uh, this seems like a good place to stop for now. I will have to debug this later, but this is now mostly working, unlike the camera focus on the uh, brother video. Yeah, this is a phone. It doesn't really like videoing this. Oh, well, this is the video I have, so this is what you're seeing. Okay, see you next time.